J.T. Crowley is talking books. On the show, you'll hear from emerging talent and seasoned veterans from around the world. They'll give you their take on the writing process and how to create the secret sauce of page-turning deliciousness. Let's get into that magical mixture of the art and science of creativity. Here's J.T. Crowley, author of The Smart Kids and your podcast host. Good evening, everybody. I'm J.T. Crowley, and joining me today is Linda Hockey, a children's author from New Mexico in the United States of America. Linda, with her husband, Mike, a retired surgical pathologist, has lived in several places in the United States, Boston, Oklahoma, just to name a few. Uh, But she now lives in the mountains in New Mexico, up towards the Colorado state line. And it's there that she lives with her dogs and also the odd stray mountain lion or cougar who happens to pop in to visit her. Also with a few black bears who decide, oh, there's a barbecue on offer. Let's go and have a visit and um, go and have a sniff. So she has uh, quite an interesting life up in the mountains there. Um, But she's mum to uh, Morgan and Owen, and she has three grandchildren. But she spent most of her life um, surrounded by hunting dogs and, um, you know, talking to children, reading to children and teaching children all about books. So let's find out a little bit more about her. Let's invite her on the show and let's see what she's got to say, everybody. Linda. John. Glad to be here. It's great to invite you on and to be able to chat to you about your um, wonderful series of books. And and of course, you know, here, I mean, I'm sitting here in the UK, so it's evening for me and for you, it's morning, isn't it? That's right. (laughs) Isn't it wonderful, Zoom? Yes, absolutely. Oh, it's great. Linda, um... Do you want to talk to us uh, a little bit about yourself and how you came to write the five books that's in the Hickory Dock uh, Tales collection? Um, Because these books, you know, I've read them, they're magical and they're spellbinding and I absolutely love them. And of course, the age range is five to nine. So, you know, go and tell us a little bit about yourself and... Why have you written these books and why now? I'd love to tell you about myself. Um, I love the dogs that we have. We've had 30 years or 30 hunting dogs, I should say, during our years. And I've also dealt with children. I did teach high school a long time ago. And I've also been involved in two museums in which we worked with young children. And Around the year 2000, I decided I'd better put down in writing the memories of all of my animals and all of their experiences when they were out in the hunting field or just simply with us in the kennels. And so that's what I've done. Wow. I mean, because um, in, the, the, uh, the kennels, uh, you know, the hacienda, and I, I love the address that you put, you know, in the book as to where the kennels are. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, and of course, you know, all the other animals that are all going to be coming into the foreplay, you know, when uh, ladies and gentlemen and kids, you're going to see they're going to be it's a wonderful array of characters in these books. Now, Lindy, you've already touched on this, but you go into um, schools, museums and talk to children Clearly, this is a great passion of yours. So when you go into those places, um, what are you trying to achieve? And do you love teaching kids? I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, you wouldn't do if you didn't, Um, would you? That's right. That's (laughs) absolutely right. But when I go into the schools, and I, uh, my books can really go on up to the fifth grade. Basically, in the first grade, the teacher, we've had a teacher in a school that actually read my first book, Hickory Docks Tales, to the children. Um, so when I go into these schools and I work with the children, I sit down to read the book and we actually walk through the book. 
And I've done that a lot with the children. And that is we might take a few pages and then I'll ask questions about it. What I'm trying to accomplish is to give them the love of reading and actually the love of act, of writing also, of using their creativity. I can put a painting or one of my books up in front of them and say, if I put you inside of this painting or book, what would you hear? What would you see? What would you feel? What would you taste? What would you smell? And when you start to do that with children, they begin to understand about writing and reading. I've even gone into the schools and I've, we, we, I've taken the children outside. And as soon as we get outside, I, I will say, this is a book. So tell me, what are you looking at? What is the first thing that you see? What are your, what characters do you want? And so they learn that way. And that is important. And I believe you and I've talked about this before, but iPads um, and all of the computer um, items that children have, that's great and wonderful. But the most important thing is to sit down with a real book and to actually turn the pages. You stop time when you do that. And you actually enjoy, I believe, that the children can enjoy reading and learning about life's lessons, but in a humorous way, not in a, um, you know, different type of way, but just a humorous way. So, I mean, and I do me, love doing it. Yeah. I mean, for me, books are escapism. It's a means of escaping. And my mum was a, um, an English teacher and she tried to teach me uh, with great difficulty because when I was nine, 10 all I was interested I was just a boy lad I just wanted to go outside and have fun outside you know reading books was just oh it was a chore now my brother loved them so you know we were very different but uh, yeah I always see books as escapism and you know great places to dream and I think a lot of kids do that don't they yes absolutely oh. and I yes they do I mean let's get into to your books Linda um which are wonderfully illustrated by um, Mick Minnick. And the first book, now this is a chunky book because um, it's a big book. Uh, it's The Pack and the First Generation. And this is the book this is where you start to introduce, you know, your main protagonist, your main character, Doc, um, and then all the other characters that are there, Zeke, um, you know, his brother, Patch, his daughter, Rush, his son, um, and, and Deacon, the three-legged German short-haired pointer, because they're all um, German short-haired pointers. And then, of course, you've got Newt the Labrador Retriever, haven't you? Yes. And you've got other um, accomplishes all to uh, embellish this fabulous collection of books. So how did you create the characters? And, and are these stories, these tail wagging adventures in these books are they all loosely um tales that you've you know happened to experience with your own dogs uh, as a matter of fact john they are uh creating the characters was that was very it was easy because they're all from my 30s dogs and doc definitely uh we had many we had quite a few dogs that were like doc the wise older one that sort of trained the younger one, Zeke, uh, who is very arrogant in a way because he thinks he's so special because he, he has a spotted, uh, they call it tit coat. Mm. And so he always thought he was from royalty. And then Patch, the daughter um, of, of dogs, uh, she was one of the best hunting dogs my husband ever had. She was fabulous. She could really point the, the, the quail. Um, and then you've got Rush who had a lot of, he was an adventurous dog. He, my, uh, my short hair pointers didn't like water, but a lot of short hair pointers do. So Rush would actually get by the pool. He was the only one that would do this and he would jump on a mat and he was perfect as long as he could stay on the mat and he would float around and all the other dogs would bark at him. So a lot of, in other words, the stories that we have in the field, mm. uh, the armadillo that Doc got, uh, the skunks that Zeke and some of the others got into, 
they are basically true adventures of what happens when a hunter goes into a field with some of these animals. And yet I've exaggerated them, obviously. Why not? That's what books are about, to exaggerate and to, you know, broaden a, a young kid's mind. Um, but for me, Linda, out of the, all the five books that make up the collection of the Hickory Docks Tales collection, the book that stands out most for me is Solitary Toes and Brown-Headed Cowbirds. And it stands out for me because you've got some of my favourite characters in this book. Um, you know, Zeke, um, who's, you know, as you said, he's a little bit arrogant. You know, he thinks, so oh, why should I have to do the work? You know, I'm a noble dog. Um, and, um, and Deacon, the um, three-legged dog, um, you know, could outrun uh, all the others. And, of course, BJ, the quarter horse. So this book, of course, is, you uh, know, it's all about how the dogs you know, react to BJ, the retired quarter horse, coming into their, their farm, their play area, their, their lives, and how they react to him and how they have a great race. Did you enjoy writing that book? Oh, I loved it. Uh, BJ, we, we've had, we had several horses, as a matter of fact, when we lived in Oklahoma. And BJ was definitely uh, a quarter horse. BJ would get into trouble because BJ would actually... Uh, go up to my husband's truck. If the, if the window was down, BJ would actually eat the lining in the truck. She would bite it off. And so she was really an unusual quarter horse, to say the least. Very, very unusual. Very, very un unusual. Um, but that was what was delightful about it because the cowbird, of course, fell down on, DJ, on BJ. Zeke was supposed to have done the race. But Zeke, of course, is kind of a coward. So Zeke had an excuse. Zeke didn't feel well. So Zeke said Deacon would, would run the race. And I don't want to spoil the story, but that's kind of how it goes. And then Zeke ends up in some rather unusual things on the track. So, it does. Yeah. It does. And, oh, kids, you need to go and read this book because what happens to Zeke is just absolutely... Really? How's he got himself into that mess? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So this is what kids' books are about. It's fun, isn't it? Yes. Have it, fun it, reading. Yes, it, it really is. It's fun. You've got to make it fun. You've got to grab them at the future, in the, in the beginning and take them along. And yet they do learn things about oh, family and friends. Uh, you know, a child's mind is an empty blackboard, my mother used to say. You know, and you can put all the writings on there and you can mould them. They don't come with baggage like older people do. Um, in your other books, I uh, said so there's five in the collection here. Uh, you've got the remarkable story of Willie the Crow. Now, he's a great little character. I, I liked Willie the Crow. And then you've got the other book is Dark Willie and the Pack, Secret Gifts and Family. And then you've got Doc's Dog Days. So they're the other three books in the collection. And now these last three books, they tend to be shorter books and there's more illustrations in them. So are they mainly aimed at your five to six, seven-year-olds, whereas the first book, probably about eight, nine? Uh, yes, but I do believe on any of those books, Doc's Dog Days, um, to me, could go all the way up to the fifth grade. I'm always mm. saying that, uh, that yes, the, the last three were shorter, and I did that on purpose so that they would appeal to the younger children, so that they could, would, they would be able to read them, obviously. Um, Doc's, uh, Dog Days is an activity book, and the children actually yeah. finish writing the story on each, and there's about 20 some different little stories, and they're very short, less than a page. And the child can go, and if they were too young, they can color in, in the illustration, or if they're a little bit older, after second, about second grade, third grade, and fourth, you know, they can go ahead and write the ending. Um, I, I love, yeah, I loved in the stories as well, and uh, you know, you've got Pete the Porcupine, 
Yes. Um, you've got Willie the Crow, and of course you've got BJ the Horse. You've got the Skunks. You've got the Armadillo. These are all a 